G'day fellas. I thought that this would be a good opportunity to go back over some of the stuff I talked about in the GT preparation video that I put up about six months ago and just kind of see what's changed since then. Back then I hadn't caught even a reasonable size GT before so I was brand new to GT fishing and it was kind of what I had heard from other people and what I thought might be good but I, I hadn't actually fully tested it all myself so now that it's been about six months I've gone on two or three GT trips and I caught a few GT. <laughs> It looks really crispy. <laughs> He's big. I've learned a lot since then. That's what this video is going to be. I'm going to try and just quickly go through the things that I've learned and what's kind of changed since that GT preparation video I put up. First thing I just want to quickly say what setup I'm using for GT. Currently, right now, I'm using the Dogfight, which is what I was using back then as well. 8000 Dogfight, and this has P10 Veravas GT Max braid on it. I use it for the off chance that I hook a 50 kilo GT from the rocks and need to lock the drag, grab the spool and get my mates to pull me backwards and run up the rocks together to try and <laughs> pull it out of the reef. I like preparing for the like the really big fish. I know that most of the time you're not hooking him but I just like to prepare for that. So that's why I've gone from the P8 and now I'm using the P10. With that in mind, I'm also using the 200 pound Veravas shock leader. I tried a few others and I used lighter leader in some instances and not only did it kind of do my head in a bit when I was hooked up on, I think I had 130 pound, it kind of tripped me out a bit. I was like freaking out that it might touch a rock or something and it, it was just another uncertainty sort of thing. But the, the real reason that I put down all other pounds other than the 200 pound is... Uh, I'm going to quickly just tell you a story. It was the middle of the day. No one was hooking up. It had completely shut down. It was a couple of days after the moon phase had quieted down and it was like a hard day's fishing. Like nothing was hitting. I put this on, which I'll go through lures in a second. But I put this little fella on. Middle of the day, smaller lure to entice a hit. And I watched the GT follow this the entire way to my feet. The GT would have been a foot at the most away from this. Just looking at it, looking at the leader, looking at everything. And I just tweaked it a couple of times. Like not even an app, like not a proper dive under swim. Just a little tiny tweak, tweak. And the GT went mental and hit it. And that was shut down fishing, no one was getting hit, middle of the day, but it was 200 pound leader. So that experience, me seeing that happen, made me go, okay, I'm just always gonna use 200 pound. P10 and 200 pound. My rod that I'm using is, do I need to get it for you? Uh, so the rod that I'm using, can you just come a bit closer for a second? Look at this, where is he? Okay, so I'm using a Ripple Fisher F Stick GT82 Long Cast. And it's only rated to PE8, but I'm using PE10. Uh, I'm playing with fire maybe a bit there. It says 120 to 170 comfort weight. Like, yeah, so that's comfort weight, but this thing throws 100 gram lures a mile. And it also can throw up to about 200. Over 200, I think you're risking big snappy snap. It is my most prized piece of fishing equipment. I love it. I even use it now for tuna fishing. <laughs> I'll, I'll seriously, I can't use other rods after using this. There is nothing like this that I've ever felt. Now, I've felt Zanax, I've felt a lot of top rods before, on the top Japanese rods, but I love the feeling of it. I love the way it feels on a fish. I love the way it feels working and casting lures. It's, it's amazing. When people ask me what rod they should get for GT fishing, I always tell them that they should get one of the top Japanese brands. I have felt a lot of rods in my time, <laughs> but the top Japanese rods are in a class of their own. I haven't felt too many carpenters. I've felt a couple of them. I felt a lot of Zanaks. I've only felt this one ripple fisher. I felt FCLs, I felt Omegas. There is a crispness and a type of feel that those all those rods have 
that you don't get in other blanks. I don't know what it is. I don't know why, but they're, they're a little bit special. And I, I highly recommend feeling those rods. I know in America, I get a lot of questions from America saying, man, where do I find snack? I can't feel them. I can't get down to a tackle shop. No one stocks them. And <clears throat> that sucks. <laughs> but however you can, wherever you are, if you can get a hands-on feel of any of those top brands, Ribble Fisher, Zanac, Carpenter, FCL, Yamega, it's probably a few more tripping out, can't remember. No matter what rod or reel you're buying, hands-on feel is the way to go. And that a lot of the times will determine your choice. Like a, I feel as a knack and I know it's amazing. I can feel it's amazing. But I feel my ripple fisher and I just absolutely love it. Like that's the one I would grab. If I was feeling both in a shop, even if the guy said this one's not as good as that one, I would still choose the ripple fisher because of the feel. I love the feel of it. And you're different. You might be completely different than me. You might feel a FCL or a Omega and go, fuck, this is the one. Like, you know what I mean? So the hands-on feel, really good, really important. Try and get it. All right, moving on. People ask me all the time what split rings to use. I've got a packet of size nine decoys here. That's what I have been using for a lot of my lures because a lot of my lures are in that medium to large range. They're not necessarily massive. If I had a massive lure, I'd go a larger size. And after 200 pound, I'm not too worried about those split rings being stretched open. I do it more based off the size of the lure and the hooks and how that will suit the size of the lure and the hooks. These are the swivels I've been using. I have three sizes here ranging from 200 kilo to 360 kilo. <laughs> but in that kind of strength range, I'm not concerned about the strength of them. I just go off the size. And if a 3.0 suits the size of the lure, that's the one I'm gonna use. I had a pretty major change in my fighting belt. I had one of those little $30 Daiwa fighting belts and it was actually great on tuna and mackerel where I had time to like just shift it over to one hip, place it there, put the rod in, everything was chilled. But on GT, when there's not a lot of time and everything's just absolute chaos, hook up, jam the rod into that little cup thing and it would just smoke my nuts. Woo! Uh, Gabby might want to film. My testes are back inside. Not good, really painful. So I got rid of that. I'm not using that anymore. And what I bought instead is an MC Works fighting belt. This is probably the most expensive piece of plastic I've ever bought in my life but it is also the most worth it. I cannot express how good this feels when fighting fish. Obviously this shape to it is better than a lot of fighting belts where you, you miss, say you miss and you get the rod, boom, there, it tends to slide into place. I highly recommend this if you're gonna buy a fighting belt. 200, 250 bucks for a piece of plastic. But I'm gonna quickly go over what lures have worked for me recently. This is a very special lure for me. You may have seen it in some of the Morning Tide films. Hook out. FCL EBI SC220. It's about 105 grams or something like that. The look of this color is ridiculous. I don't know if these lights really show up, but in sunlight, this thing looks amazing. This compared to other poppers, it's so much easier to work probably because of that shape right there. It, it has a very forgiving cup, but it still gets that nice blooping sound, not as big as like a bigger popper, doesn't have that detonation sound, but it still sends shockwaves down into the water. And if a GT sees this thing, man, I've hooked up on this thing a lot. This is, I bought a new one because my other one got shredded to pieces by action, by fish action. I would have had upward of 15 hits. My favorite popper right now is this thing. If the fishing's really shut down, I've bought his smaller brother, which is the same shape, but I think he's about 65 grams. So a bit lighter. Once again, very easy to work. Casts, both of these lures cast really well. It's another FCL. On one of the recent trips, I got a good GT on this. And this one is like, oh, get out of here. Get This little Nomad Riptide 155 sinking. 
the floating really good as well. Uh, this thing lost its eyeball in the middle of the day when everything's shut down and you need to cast something out that you know they're going to hit. GT can be finicky. I know some people say, oh, a GT will hit anything. But a lot of the time you catch one, catch two, and they're still out there. You can see them follow your lures and they won't hit. And they do shut down pretty hard, especially depending on the moon phase as well. They, they can be tricky to hook. GT can be a nightmare, actually. Having these contingency plans where <laughs> if nothing else is working, you want to be able to put on something small and very attractive. The... FCL, which I'll put the name on, I can't remember the name, and Nomad, Riptide, both really good for me, they worked really well, both caught GT. Oh, I have to talk about the strategic angler. I gave it away because I wanted to do something special for my followers, and giving away the lure that got my best ever GT seemed like a pretty rad thing to do. Anyway, that lure got me my best GT so far. It was a pretty special situation with that strategic angler where we saw the GT, we knew they were right there, and everyone was kind of competing against each other to get the hook up. I felt pretty confident just because my lure was massive, pink, bright pink, and I know it has really good action. So I highly recommend strategic angler walker series. I wish I still had one. I might have to buy myself another one. Bright pink, yeah, it worked in that situation. I'll probably go a more natural color next time, but the um, the action of those lures is amazing. Uh, I wanted to talk about the Red Tank Scud because it hooked up more than any other lure on the last trip for me. I used it a fair bit and that was because it's a slow sinking lure that anytime there was a lot of current it would swim really well. But this thing, it, it had great action and I hooked two GT, two mackerel on it. Dropped them all. I had a barbless single on the back of it and I don't think I'm going to be running barbless singles anytime soon again. We actually did a morning tide signature series of that. This is a test uh, morning tide signature series colour siege but we've already done the scud and it sold out in a couple of hours so uh, I'm keen to get my hands on another one of them. Next shipment I might just have to steal one. Red tank scud, definitely check it out. It, it was pretty damn good on the GT and mackerel. I had one of the biggest GT hits of my entire life on this thing. Look them up, Bommy Knockup. They throw a lot of spray, they cast amazing, and it's just another local Aussie lure maker that it's rad to support. My glove, I get a lot of questions about that as well. The glove I use is Nomad, the Nomad casting popping gloves. The other boys use more finesse gloves. And that's cool as well, but I just like how strong these things are. With hooks, while I'm fishing, if some hook setup doesn't work, I go into my rather ridiculously messy hook box and I pick out something else to try. So that might be a bigger hook to keep it in the water a bit more, or it might be a smaller hook to free it up. Uh, it might be switching from a treble to a single. I want all possible options for each lure on the rocks with me at all times. Yay! <laughs> I've been using the BKK GT Rex. These are five O's. That had mixed in with it this, which is a Gamakatsu GT Recorder 6 O. And I've been using both of them as my main travels. For singles, I've been using Chiap Kadaku singles. And they're really strong and good. For small lures, like these fellas, I've been using BKK Raptors and those have bent out on, on GT. That is fine because they're a small hook and any small hook would bend out on that size fish with that much drag. I was probably going way too hard on them because I didn't know how big the fish was until it popped up. I've got a couple of owners mixed in as well. ST66 trebles. I'm just going to give you a couple of tips for GT. When you first rock up to a ledge, you should throw your biggest cyclist lure that you have. If that's a massive stick bait or if that's a massive popper, throw it 
and try and get the big dog. If there's a GT resident GT in that area, they're usually going to hit on the first few casts within the first couple of minutes, usually the first five minutes. And if you throw some tiny little lure, they might not even come up and look at it. So you want something big to begin with. Usually you'll get a hookup and a lot of the time with the big dog when he comes up, he has a bunch of little mates with him and the smaller fish will hit will hit that lure. Which is just part of the part of the game. It's part of the fun. If for some reason there's no hookup at the beginning on the bigger lure, I'll start to throw something mid sized, maybe something like this. I probably pop for about ten or fifteen minutes. If I'm getting nothing then I'll switch to a stick bait. It isn't until I'm pretty deep in the session, like maybe a few hours in, if there's been nothing and we're staying at this ledge, we're not gonna move to another ledge. That's when I'll go, okay, I just wanna get something. I want some kind of action. So that's when I put on the smaller lures. That's pretty much my main advice for lure selection is just go big at the beginning and taper your way down until you get to the point in the day where you're desperate for a hit. So you put on the the smaller stuff which possibly bends out the hooks or something bad happens. The only, the only uh, thing different to that is if it is really shut down, like nothing happening at all, it's the middle of the day, yeah, trying the small thing is, is a pretty good option, but also going back to the really, really big popper can entice a hit. It can piss off the GT enough that you're going to get a strike. So. Yeah, you just gotta play around, see see what the fish are like on the day, and man, if they're on fire, you, you probably just keep your favourite lure on and keep hooking them all day. But if they start to start to be a bit tricky, going for a small lure or every once in a while throwing on the massive popper to try and piss them off is also a good option. I think in in general, current is current is key. If you find raging current, you find GT. But on top of that. You don't want to just fish anywhere in the current. Yeah, it's probably in a boat. It's probably rad to just kind of do a drift past the islands in that current zone, popping your way along. That'd be sick. But if you're going to be land-based, you do want to kind of go to the leading edge of the current. You don't want to go to the chaotic zone where you can't even work your lure. Current, good lure selection, strong gear, and, and, and be prepared to cast a lot. Those are probably the key points for GT that I've learned so far. The thing about it is I've only gone on three trips and I'm still yet to get a, a really big one. Cabby got a big one, Johnny's had big ones. I'm still waiting for my really big one. From what I can tell with the other boys is I'm running a lot more drag than them. That's not necessarily a good thing, but it's just how I like to fish. I, I don't like grabbing my spool too much. I instead try and use the drag, like a good, good drag setting and then adjust the drag if I need to sort of thing. I think I've been putting in about 20 kilos of drag on most fish and it's an it's a it's at that bit where they can run a bit like zzz, zzz, and then they're stopped and you can pump them back pretty hard that they, they don't run much on 20 kilo but these again are only 15 to 20 kilo fish so yet to hook the big 30 40 50 plus fish and when I do I think that this thing is going to be locked down fully locked and I'll be grabbing the spool as well. But anyway, try and keep doing a few more of these Tackle Talk videos as I go. Tuna season coming up for us, so we're going to be spinning a bit on the lighter setups. I'll probably put a light reel on my Ripple Fisher because I love the reel so much. Uh, there's a big series coming on Morning Tide, which I'm just editing at the moment. And I might might be a bit quiet until that comes out. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed this film. Bit of a recap on the GT fishing. And I'll try and keep getting as much content as I possibly can to you guys. Yeah.